only instruct the daughters. Hallelujah. And we want to talk, we want to go back, and I'm just going to go over a few verses on the elect honorable lady, the daughter, the woman of Zion, and her attributes of her beauty. Hallelujah. And remember, I'm only instructing the daughters, righteous and unrighteous. Because sometimes when you're walking in wickedness and nobody ever explains to you what is righteous to do, how would you know? So if you stumble up upon this video, may it be a help and a strength to you. Hallelujah. The elect daughter of to Zion. Praise you. So I want to start with this first, coming from Wisdom, chapter 4, verse 8. It says, For the honorable age is not that which stands in length of time, nor that is measured by number of years. But wisdom is the gray hair to men, and an unspotted life is old age. Hallelujah. Sharat chapter 10 verse 19. Who is worthy of honor? They that fear Yahweh are a sure seed and they that love Almighty Yah is an honorable planted daughter. Who is worthy of honor? And daughters, you know, as we walk in this truth, as we are instructed of the messenger, we should know how to carry ourselves at all times. And can I tell you, daughters, once you come to the knowledge of this truth, you can't get ahead of the instructor. You must be taught how to carry yourself every day. And by hearing this Torah truth, it will make you free. It will keep you on the straight and narrow path. You know, I was young once. When we started walking this way, I was a 21-year-old daughter. There were so many things that I did not know. I didn't even know how to walk before Almighty Yah. But as I heard the messenger, I would discipline myself. I would cast down all of my evil and corrupt ways because, daughters, I was very corrupt. No, when I came to the knowledge of the truth, y'all did not tell me I was sweet and loving and kind. No, he didn't. He showed me how vile. No, he didn't talk to me either from the Shemayams. But he showed me by the hearing of this truth, the things I must get out of my heart. The heart is here. The things I must get out of my heart. How I must dress before him and how I must seek him with all of my being and all of my... Um, Nefesh. And I started. And as I would hear something from the Torah and it didn't and my life didn't add up, I would cast it down. But can I tell you one of the things I would do? I would listen to the elders, the age women that had a tough report. Because there were other age women that I was around, but their report wasn't tough. But as I saw the righteousness of other age women. I would pattern my life after theirs. Covering myself as a righteous daughter. I knew I, there were things that I wanted just wasn't righteous. It wasn't set apart. It wasn't cold ash. But as I learned, daughters, I didn't fight. I didn't try to get around or go up under the truth. I would just obey. And as I obeyed, I was blessed of Almighty Yah. And can I tell you, daughter, when you fear Almighty Yahweh, when you truly fear Him, there will be a discipline in your life. When you don't fear Yah, when you don't fear Him, then there's no discipline. Can I tell you, when others, when you're disciplined, others will see. The wicked will see. The righteous will see. So when you fear Almighty Yahweh, there is a discipline. Hallelujah. But we have a story here. And can I tell you, it's such a beautiful story. I pray that I don't cry, and I'm going to try to get through this, because every time I read it, I weep. 
because to see the men and the women of Yah in this book, we're coming from Maccabees. This is one of the lost books of the Torah. But I want to express this without shedding tears because I want you all to get the full understanding of this. And this is a true picture of an honorable mother and how her beauty is expressed upon her husband man in the training of her sons, the wife of a faithful man, the clothing of this woman and her sons. And I want to start with Maccabees chapter 7 verse 1. It came to pass also that seven brothers with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the Torah to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourge and whips. And I want to tell you daughters, and you say, well, what is swine? It's pig, pork. They didn't eat unclean. I don't care how you wash and how you pray over it. Pork, swine, it's unclean. And Yah tells us what clean things the people of Yah must eat. Verse 2. But one of them that spoke first said this, What would you ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the Torah of our fathers. And what these sons were telling the king, we're not going to eat unclean meat just to satisfy you. It's against the Torah. So these young men were ready to stand for truth. Sometimes we just, we're willing to go against Torah, anything to satisfy the lust of our flesh. And daughters, we must make a stand. All these years, once we came to the knowledge that pork was unclean, you didn't have to worry about me. Anything that goes against Torah, I'm willing to, to make a stand. And we must be, too. From your dress, it starts with the mind first, daughters. Once you realize that keeping the commandments of Yah is important, then you won't go against anything else that Yah commands us to do. Verse 3. Then the king, being in rage, he commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which for, forwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongues of him that spoke first. There was a brother that spoke first. And to cut off the utmost parts of his body. The rest of his brothers and his mother looking on. The king said, you, you spoke first. He said, we're going to cut your tongue out and everything else that extends itself out, we're going to cut it out since you're so smart and you're ready to stand for Torah truth. Now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him, being yet alive, be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapors of the pan was for a long space dispersed, they exalted one another with their mother to die manfully, saying this, Almighty Yah looks upon us. In truth, has comfort, it, has comfort in us. As Moshe in his songs, which witness to their faces, Declare saying, and he shall be comforted in his servants. Be faithful. Be faithful. Stand for truth. For Almighty Yah shall deliver. Well, you say, when well, how did he deliver? He did deliver him in death. In death. If you stand for truth, even though you shall die, you shall get up. But when you get up, you will get up and you shall reign. With Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Verse 7. So when the first was dead. After this number. They brought the second brother. To make him a marking stock. And when they had pulled off. The skin of his head. With his hair. They asked him. Will you eat? Before you be punished. Throughout every member of your body. 
They pulled off his skin and his hair. Verse 8. But he answered in his own language. And he said, No. Wherefore, he also received the next torment in order, as the former did. So the same way they killed the first one, they killed the second brother that way too. You just said, just for some swine's meat, it goes against Torah. It goes against the Torah. So if it means to suffer unto death, will you stand for the truth? Verse 9, and when he was at last, he said, you like a fury, take us out of this present life, but the king of the world shall rise us up, shall raise us up, who have died for his Torah. Who has died for the Torah? Who would die for the Torah truth? To everlasting life. If you die for truth, you shall get up to everlasting life. After him was the third brother. They made a mockery of him, and when he was required, he put out a, they pulled out his tongue, and that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully, he said, here, take my hands too. You pull my tongue, here, take my hands too and said courageously, these I had from heaven, and his Torah I despise them, and from him I tigva to receive them again. Insomuch that the king and they that were with him marveled at this young man and his courage. For that he nothing regarded his pain. He didn't even consider his pain. He just said, whatever it takes to go through, I'm willing. And we must be the same way, daughters. <clears throat> we must be the same way. And we must stand for this truth. You know, I've seen, I've been young and now I'm old. We're in an hour where this is such a corrupt generation. We don't consider our sins and our evil ways. We can look at everybody else, but we never see our evil ways, our evil thoughts. We must make a stand for Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Now when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth brother, but he stood faithful. We're in an hour. Are we going to be proven faithful? Are we? Maccabees 7 and 14. So when he was ready to die, he said this, It is tough being put to death by men, to look for Tigva from Yahweh, to be raised up again by him. As for you, you shall have no resurrection to life. Verse 15, afterwards they brought the fifth brother also, and they mangled him. Then looked he, to the king and said, you have power over men. You are corruptible. You do what you will. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of almighty Yah. But no, sir. But abide a while and behold his great power, how he will torment you and your seed. You, Yah's gonna repay you, king. You think you're doing something great. You're making mockery of us. But Almighty Yahweh is going to bring vengeance on you. Who being ready to die said, Be not deceived without cause. For we suffer these things for ourselves. 
have sinned against Yahweh. Our Almighty. We have sinned against Yah. I have sinned against Yah. But I will make a stand. And you must make a stand. And you shall escape unpunishment. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Daughters, I'm going to get through this teaching. Yes, that's why it took me a little bit longer on this part. Because I couldn't stop crying. Hallelujah. Verse 20. But the mother marveled above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, not seven days, one day, she bared it with a tough courage because of the tikva that she had in Almighty Yah. Daughters, we can't stand even see our children stomp their toe. Hallelujah. We're ready to give up on Yah. Oh, Yah, why did this happen to me? Is Yah sure how much she has suffered much? Bear yourself up because you're going to suffer also. And take great delight in your suffering, your trials. Your ch we can't go through anything, daughters. We can't. But arm yourself likewise, as y'all sure how much she has suffered for you and I. Bear yourself up. Prepare yourself. Prepare your mind. Because then we're, we're not just going to go sailing into the kingdom. But, but, but by much trial and tribulation, y'all tries us to prove our Ahava for him. If you truly love him, we cry about this. We cry about this. Well, why am I going through this? Why am I going? Just say, Toda Yah, that you have given me all of this truth that I can stand victorious every day. Not sometimes, but you can stand victorious. I stand victorious every day. Can I say something, daughters? I was in an accident 26 years ago. And no, I did not let them do surgery on me. So I have one leg that's shorter than the other. It's two inches shorter. So when I walk, I rock when I walk. Side to side, side to side. I have shoulder pains. I have back pains. There's certain things I can't lift. But do I give y'all told? I give him told up because I'm alive. I'm not in a wheelchair. I'm not in the bed, but I can get up and I can assist. So I give y'all told her, are you going to be fine and faithful? Are you going to curse Almighty Yah like Eob's wife did? She said, why don't you curse Yah and die? No, you give Yah told her. Every day that you're alive, you give him told her. If he's granted you life, you give him told her. Hallelujah. But this mother, seeing her sons die, Seven sons died in one day. She bared it with tough courage because of the tigva that she had in Almighty Yah. Verse 21. Yes, she exalted every one of them in her own language, filled with courage and righteous ruah, and stirring them up. This mother and her thoughts with a manly stomach, she said to them, I cannot tell how you came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generations of men and found out the beginning of all things, will also of his own kindness give you breath of life again, as you now regard not your own selves for his Torah's sake. You didn't consider your life, but you know the one that created you will raise you up again. So stand strong, and that's what they did. They stood strong, honoring Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Verse 24. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, while the youngest was yet alive, did not only exalt him by his words. Now the king, he's trying to deceive the youngest one but also assured him with oath that if he would make him both a rich and happy man, if he would turn from the Torah of his father, and that also would he take him for his friend and trust him with his affairs. Look how wicked this king is. Can I tell you in the end, he still would die and go to hell. Having riches on this earth and having great position, if you don't honor Almighty Yah in your life, what gain is it? But when the young man would in no case hearken to the king, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when he had exalted her with many words. She promised him that she would counsel her son. Can I tell you what kind of counsel she gave him? Righteous counsel. But she, bowing herself towards him, laughing, the cruel tyrant to scorn, spoke in her country language on this manner. Oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear you nine months in my womb and give you such three years and nourish you and brought you up to this age and endured the troubles of education. She says, I beseech you, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein. And consider that Yahweh Almighty made them of things that were not. And so was mankind made likewise. Fear not the tormentor, but being worthy of your brethren, take your death that I may receive you again in compassion with your brothers. Take your death. Stand strong, my son. Regard not the king's words, but you can bear this death. Stand strong. While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait for you? I will not obey the king's commandments, but I will obey the commandments of the Torah truth that was given to my father and to the father Moshe. And you that have been the author of my mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Verse 25. For we suffer because of our sins. And we do, daughters. When we have hardships in our lives, it's because we're not, it's our sins that cause these hardships. Hallelujah. Verse 33. And though the living Yahweh be angry with us a little while, just a little while, for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. He'll come back. He'll come for us. Hallelujah. But you, O oh wicked man, you, O oh wicked king, the king that you are, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain tigva, lifting up your hands against the servants of Almighty Yah. It's a terrible thing to come against the servants of Almighty Yah. You'll know who they are. You'll see their labor, and you speak in evil 
and you come against them, y'all will reward you. Hallelujah. For you have not yet escaped the judgment of the sovereign, almighty Yahweh, who sees all things. Yahweh's eyes are to and fro in the earth. He's seeking for those that will do that which is righteous. Verse 36. For our brethren who now have suffered a short pain, it wasn't long, it was just a short pain, are dead under Yahweh's covenant of everlasting life. But you, through the judgment of Yahweh Almighty, shall receive just punishment for your pride. Pride goes before fall. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the Torah of our fathers, beseeching your will almighty that he would speedily be compassionate to our nation and that you, by torments and plagues, may confess that he alone is Yahweh almighty. He stands alone. Hallelujah. Maccabees 7 and 38. And that in me and my brethren, the wrath of Almighty Yahweh, which is justly brought upon our nation, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handed him worse than all the rest of his brothers, and he took it grievously that he was mocked. Verse 40. So this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in Almighty Yah. Last of all, after the son's death, the mother died. Also, trusting in Almighty Yah, the renewed birth, the renewed beginning. Daughters, when you make a stand, you can be just like this mother. She was the elect lady. When we trust in Almighty Yah, when we learn to cast down our evil thoughts, our evil ways. We can be just like this elect lady. As Ruth was. As the virtuous daughter in Proverbs. That's what we must be like. And we can. Every day we put forth an effort. To be more like the elect lady. Trusting in almighty Yahweh. Everything that goes against Torah in your mind. Cast it down Lord. There's nothing in Yah that we cannot do. And we must understand that. We must make a stand for righteousness. I don't care what anyone thinks about how I live, being set apart, how I dress, how I think. And even before I speak, before I speak, I think before I speak. That I may make a righteous judgment. What I say, I'm careful with what I say. You know, there was a time when I was young, I was foolish. So my thoughts were foolish. I didn't think before I spoke. But as I get older, I understand by and by. That's why at this time of my life, I can assist a woman at my age, older women, younger women. I am a mother in this truth, in this Torah truth. I'm not about foolishness and playing games and watching videos and and YouTube all the time. We must study to show ourselves approved of Almighty God. So that we can stand in this. You never know what tribulations you're going to have to confront. So you have to prepare yourself. You must study to show yourself unto Almighty God. This is a daily walk before you. We must practice this every day. We must not examine your sister, your cousin. You must examine yourself. That you may be a vessel that your, your children can see. 
the daughters can see. Those that are not walking in truth, they must see the righteousness about you also. Laboring willingly with your hands, daughters. Being a keeper of your home. We as righteous daughters, you must be a keeper of your home. Keeping it clean. Preparing meals for your family. These are things that are pleasing before Almighty Yah. You say, well, I don't know how to cook. You don't know how to cook because you choose not to. Anytime you say you don't know how to, it's because you choose not to. Me walking this way, daughters, for these 40 plus years, there's nothing that I, there's nothing that I say I can't do. Once I set my mind to do it, I will do it. I want to be pleasing for Almighty Yah, and we must take the kingdom by force. Cast your wicked thoughts down, your wicked ways. We must take the kingdom by force and stand as this mother stood watching her sons be put to death. This is not a fairy tale. This is truth. This is Torah truth. This truth will give you the power to stand in these last and evil days. And the days are evil. They're evil. There's much evil present in this hour. Whose side are you on? Can't be on your mama's side. You must be on Almighty Yah's side. Hallelujah. Know this teaching is short, but can I tell you, this is powerful. So I'm not coming to the brothers, only to the daughters, that you may be able to stand in these hours. I give Yah Toda for all that he's done for us here and what he's going to continue to do for this community. Hallelujah. To show a community. We give you, we give you our total for all things. Sending greetings to you all. Oh, Ashley, Yahweh, Baruch, you stand strong, daughter, stand strong. And I say shalom, shalom to you all. If you like other content, just remember to press thumbs up. Hallelujah, and we'll be back with you with another teaching, not from Ema Raphael, but from Rayak Dawi. Yahweh, Baruch, you have an excellent, excellent yom. Shalom, shalom.